یک مقام آگاه نظامی کشور اعلام کرد با کنترل مناسب فضای کشور و تسلط اطلاعاتی نیروهای مسلح واحدهای جنگ الکترونیکی و پدافند هوایی موفق شدند یک فروند هواپیمای بدون سرنشین پیشرفته جاسوسی امریکایی از نوع RQ-170 را که به طور محدود به مناطق مرزی شرق کشور تجاوز کرده بود کشف و از کنترل متجاوزان خارج و آن را با اندک خسارتی سرنگون کنند و در اختیار بگیرند. Well, we begin tonight with a question. Is the U.S. close to war with Iran? Tensions between Tehran and the West continue to escalate. Recent events show both countries are engaging in a dangerous political game. Just this past weekend, Iran claims to have shot down a U.S. drone flying over the country on the same day explosions outside the British embassy in Bahrain. This after the U.S. claimed Iran is behind a plot to kill a Saudi ambassador to Washington right here on U.S. soil. There's been a series of other mysterious explosions as well as assassinations of key scientists. Meanwhile, the U.S. is cracking down on the country through a series of sanctions. All this has some asking, are we already at war with Iran? Let's take a look at some of the headlines on the web today. These are the headlines from the Daily Mail, The Atlantic, and Newsmax. All of them ask the very same question, are we already at war with Iran? Now, officials on both sides have not shied away from rallying to go to war. How can you forget Senator John McCain's performance a few years back? That old, uh, that old Beach Boy song, Bomberan, you know, <laughs> bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> anyway. And more recently, Republican presidential candidates have said that we aren't being aggressive enough with Iran. Take Mitt Romney, for example. He recognized the gravest threat that America and the world faces, had faced was a nuclear Iran, and he did not do what was necessary to get Iran to be dissuaded from their nuclear folly. What he should have done is speak out when dissidents took to the streets and say America is with you and work on a covert basis to encourage the dissidents. But with everything that has happened, is this proof that a covert war is already happening? Well, to answer just that, I spoke to author Tariq Ali. Here is his take. I think that for a number of years now, Western intelligence agencies have been active inside that country. Uh, there's been enough evidence to suggest that. And the pressure is now building up on the regime in Tehran to comply with the needs of the West, or else, or else what? Are they going to invade? Are they going to use the Israelis to knock out the nuclear reactors? I mean, that would be so irrational on the part of the American ruling elite that my, uh, my opinion has been now for several years that the Pentagon in particular is not in favor of starting a new war against a country which has quite a well-organized army, navy and air force and a country in which if they begin a war uh, the war would spread very rapidly into Iraq, into probably Israel via Lebanon, and the gloves would be off in Afghanistan. But, so the Iranians can fight back on four different frontiers. And um, we are seeing that Israel is, is gearing up to go to war with Iran. If Israel does take that step, uh, do you think that the U.S. will follow suit and also go to war? 
I think the last I read about the U.S. response to that was uh, Mr. Panetta's response from the Pentagon, that the United States was completely opposed to any unilateral attacks on Iran by Israel. He made quite a strong statement uh, for him. One assumes that that is the official U.S. position, in which case they will not be in favor of it, because no one will believe that the Israeli regime carried out an attack on Iran without a green light from the United States. Even if they do it and the U.S. hasn't given the green light, no one in the region will believe that. So for the United States to stop this, if that is what they wish to do, they will have to intervene forcefully with the Israelis. But my own feeling is that the Israelis really already isolated in that region with the events in Egypt and other parts of the Arab world will think very hard before um, before launching an attack on Iran's nuclear reactors because that would be a declaration of war. And, you know, we are seeing um, leaders on both sides kind of um, cracking down and, and um, using harsh rhetoric, um, uh, almost uh, pushing to go to war um, or at least to, to prevent diplomatic talks from happening between the two countries. Um, I want to ask you, Tariq, uh, who stands to benefit from going to war with Iran? Well, to be perfectly frank, my own opinion is that going to war in, uh, against Iran would be against the interests of the United States in that region. I mean, the Israelis are obsessed with the Iranian nuclear reactors because they want to preserve their own nuclear monopoly in that region. But that may be an Israeli interest, though it's foolish even on their part. Why should they have a monopoly? But it can't be in the interests of the United States uh, to defang Iran. I mean, the Iranians have a perfect right to do what they're doing, even though they say they're not. Uh, they're surrounded by countries with nuclear weapons. Israel has nuclear weapons, Pakistan has nuclear weapons, India has nuclear weapons, China has nuclear weapons, United States vessels armed with nuclear weapons patrol their seas. So the Iranians are right to be nervous. And these days, people acquire nuclear weapons as a method of self-defense. Um, okay. And um, I, I want to ask you, um, because we are seeing this increased tension between the two countries, especially in the wake of, of these recent events. Uh, most recently, there, there was a drone um, that landed in, in Iran. Iran claims that they shot it down. The U.S. hasn't verified this. Um, but, I mean, could this be seen as an act of, of, an act of war? Well, I regard drones as an act of war even though American lawyers uh, backing the Obama administration have been defending them and saying that it's a legitimate activity for the United States to do this. The question is, did the United States l launch the drone, if indeed it was launched, or was it the Israelis? Uh, are they testing the waters for something else? Uh, that is what it seems like to me. It's perfectly possible that the Iranians shot it down. One reads that they have quite a sophisticated anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense system, uh, which they've uh, uh, bought from friendly powers. Well, if, if, if it was a test run, it failed because the Iranians knocked it down. Okay, um, so this is just one of, of many examples uh, of increased tension between the two countries. Do you think that this uh, could uh, signify uh, a pretext to, to, all, to an all-out war with Iran? Well, it could, but who is going to authorize such a war? It's totally impossible that such a war would be authorized by the Security Council, because I think the Chinese and the Russians would veto it. Uh, I think Brazil is hostile to any such idea uh, of a war. Uh, I think the Indians would not favor such a war. So you would have the BRIC countries, which are quite important economically and as trading partners in their own way, hostile to a war with Iran. That means it would be the Israelis in the Arab world, with the Saudis wanting it but not daring to say so openly, the United States, and its European allies 
Of course, they could do it, but the consequences would be dire, not just for the region, uh, but for the oil supplies of the rest of the world. So I, am, I remain to be convinced. I still feel that what is going on is a lot of rocket rattling. Uh, to scare the Tehran regime into accepting the West's impositions on it. Uh, but I may be wrong. It may be more serious than that. In, and if that is the case, then I think the world would be in the grimmest situation for a long, long time. And, um, you know, you're kind of taking this more optimistic stance that perhaps this, this all-out all out war um, isn't, imminent. But, but what about um, a possible repeat of Libya if this war isn't declared, but, you know, um, where, where they establish a no-fly zone, and that ultimately led to war. Um, do you see that happening? Um, I hope the no-fly zone was established by the Security Council, uh, which gave it a veneer of um, you know, sort of international uh, legal approval. And in my opinion, the uh, Russians and the Chinese were completely wrong to support that. Uh, and others should have voted against it and not abstained. But with that, they went into Libya. I don't think they're going to get legal sanction from that from the Security Council. So are they going to do it unilaterally like they did in Iraq? Well, if they do, they will have a price to pay. That's the point I'm saying. They can't get away with attacking Iran because it's going to be impossible to occupy that country. If they just make war on it from above and destroy the nuclear reactors, these nuclear reactors are spread all over the country. It's not just one area. So it will be seen as an act of war, and the Iranians will retaliate wherever they think fit. So where is that going to get the United States? It's not something that they can win. Okay, um, Tariqa, I want to ask you one more question. Um, beyond Iran, uh, we are seeing this increased tension in the region um, with Pakistan, with Afghanistan, um, especially after uh, the U.S. Uh, NATO airstrike that accidentally killed 24 Pakistanis. Pakistan is now taking action and telling the U.S. to get out and to take their drones out of the country. Um, so in the region, we are seeing this growing anti-American sentiment. Uh, what is behind it? Well, what is behind it is a refusal of Obama and the Democrats to understand that the Afghan war has to be ended and that they have to withdraw NATO troops from there. Every time they shrink from making that judgment, they escalate the war in Pakistan because they imagine that without the uh, Pakistani support this war would come to an end, which is a wrong assumption. Uh, the resistance in Afghanistan may use certain help from Pakistan or others, but it is quite autonomous.